Now, it could well be the toughest show on TV, featuring some of the toughest contestants and toughest judges. Move over, Strictly. Bake off, eat your heart out. This is SAS. Who dares wins? And this is a real contest. Wow, that's tough. Nice Jason to Fox. watch it from yeah, the sofa. It yeah, it's warmer here. Uh, one of the show's ex-special service <clears throat> trainers is uh, is here now. Uh, welcome back. Nice to nice see you. To see you. What was your what was your path through the Marines? Uh, I joined I joined the Marines when I was sixteen actually. So I left home. I needed to get away. I was getting into trouble. Did uh, about nine years in the Marines and then went on to special forces selection. Did another just shy of ten years. And so this is kind of a real insight for the viewer at home that might not know anything about this, of what that selection process is like for the SAS, um, and seeing whether or not you've got the, not just the physical capability, but the, the mental capability to do it. Yeah, I'd say it's more the mental side of things, really. Yeah, OK, it's great to be physically robust, but a lot of it, I'd say 75% is it, 75 of it is down to what's going on in your head. Really? Yeah. Definitely. And did you find that when you were doing the training? Yeah, I think the, the hardest hurdle is your own, is what's going on in your head. Because you, you overthink things and you sort of second guess whether you're doing well or whether you're doing badly. And you'll always self-critique. I did really quite a lot, so I had to get over that. Mm. The, the physical side wasn't, OK, yeah, it is hard, but it wasn't as hard as what, you know, what you sort of like, the pressures you put on yourself. Yeah. Well, this is uh, Series 5, um, and you say this is perhaps the most challenging and unforgiving camp that there's been yet, and a lot of that is to do with the backdrop and where it's set and the weather and all of those sorts of things. Yeah, Scotland. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's beautifully brutal, I suppose. Right. But there is a special... That, that is a, you know, that's a special place. It's like going home. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it is our sort of backyard when it comes to training, you know, David Sterling, who was the, uh, you know, he was the founder of the Special Forces. He's from Scotland, but you do an awful lot of training up there, and it is, it is one of the reasons why the British military are so good and they're, you know, they're resilient because of that place. Mm. Mm. And so I suppose oh, we've gosh. seen. Oh, look at that! That's no not going to be warm. Um, I suppose that uh, in the past you have gone, you've taken the the show to uh, to places that were warm. Mm. Um, what was the reaction from the people who wanted to take part when they got their ticket and they saw it had Inverness written on it? Well, <laughs> so they, they, none of them know where they're going on any of the um, series that we've done until they turn up at either the train station or the airport and there's a, there's, there it is. And I think they, they play the numbers game where they're like, well, last year they were somewhere cold, so this year it must be warm. And it's not done like that, it's just random. So I think, I mean, I wasn't there, but they turned up at the airport, they got given a boarding cart and it just said Inverness on. I think they... They were pretty upset about it. They looked very despondent when they turned up, when, we, when we met them, yeah. Well, they, you know, they might try and second-guess things, but this time there is a mole in camp, which is something that's never been done before. Not, not in this way. No. Always, we've always had someone, like, on the inside telling us bits and pieces, but this time we've got one of our friends, a former Special Forces soldier, who's in... He's in deep... He's in deep. He is. <laughs> so he, is he feeding back information and kind of... How, how does it work? He, so, yeah, we, we, we pull him out every now and again, make it look very natural, and then he feeds us information on all the people that he's living with. And he... I mean, it's, it's this weekend, isn't it, that he, his big reveal? There, there is a reveal this weekend. You reveal, which is quite it's exciting. exciting. Yeah. I mean, that's what everybody's waiting for. And, and can you tell us what the reaction is like from, from the others, or...? I... They were quite controlled. But there is, there is shock. Of course, there's always people going, I knew it. Yeah. But did they? Yeah, did they really? Did, did they? they? Um, the people who apply are broad and different and um, eclectic. Yeah. So uh, tell us about some of the ones that are impressing you this time round. Um, <laughs> they're, I mean, they all, they all... Everyone surprises you in different ways, some underwhelmingly, some overwhelmingly. There's some... People on here that are small in stature but are strong. We've got a guy called Mark on there. He's a drag queen who I, I didn't see that one coming. He's actually a Civil bit, War. Civil War. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. Uh, he's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there, there is a mixed group. Mm. They've, they're from all sorts of different backgrounds and they've all got something to say and something to prove. And some of them do a very good job of proving it. Yeah. Um, you've been very open. I know in your book, Battle Scars, you wrote about um, how your, ex your experiences in some of the world's most dangerous places have affected your mental health. And, you know, you were discharged from Special mm -hmm. Boat Services in 2012 with PTSD. Um, 
you've been very open, I think it's quite good to talk about this again, that you dismissed a lot of those symptoms at the time mm. as kind of, uh, you know, that you were, had, a, had a moment of weakness or that you, were, you didn't have your courage and all those sorts of things, something you learnt was, was wrong. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I did. I was, I was actually quite, in my time in the service, was, you know, in the earlier days, I was a big non-believer in, like, mental health or PTSD within soldiers. And then, you know, fast forward and I'm eating a massive slice of, slice of humble pie. Yeah. And a lot of the reasons why I probably left when I did was because I, was, I wasn't being honest with myself. I wasn't just sort of get, being open, talking about it, getting it out there, working out what I needed to do and then cracking on. I sort of bowled it up and it got to the point where it was a little bit too late. So I was being, in the end, it was very reactive as opposed to proactive. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, for me, it was, you know, a word of advice is to sort of nip it in the bud at an early stage if you're not feeling right. And get talk the help about you it. need, yeah, which exactly. you did do and you've come through yeah. and come out. And that's the thing, you know, you just said there, talk about it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, guys, especially, you know, tough guys, uh, just don't talk about it. <laughs> they don't. I mean, there is this... You know, the archaic way of saying it is, you know, just suck it up and yeah. don't talk about it. But it's not working because there's a lot of people that have mm -hmm. taken their lives or they're, they're struggling really badly. And so it's, it's, things need to change. And so for me, it is talking about it. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, uh, you so much, Jason. It's SAS Who Dares wins Sunday at nine on Channel 4. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.